give you guys a recap of what we've been talking about this semester. Um, so here it is. We talked about who Christ is. We talked about his power. We talked about his love. We talked about his example of service. Um, and more importantly, we talked about how he's a person we need because we can't live without him. Um, we've heard testimonies even tonight by man um, and from our young life leaders of how God has worked in people's lives, how God has molded people's lives and scoped people's lives. Um, and we've, we've learned uh, in these past few weeks how sin is our rejection and uh, ultimately our ultimate separation from God. And we've learned that, that that's a choice. That's not something God puts on us. Um, we choose to sin. We choose to do wrong. Um, we choose to go our own way. Um, everybody knows, most people know Romans 3.23. Um, for all the sin that falls short of the glory of God. Um, There's a verse in Proverbs. Proverbs 14 says that there's a way that seems right to man, but it's in this way to death. <coughs> so there's a way that some of us see that that's right for us to go. A way that some of us see that's the, the correct path to walk, and it just leads to death. Um, and and uh, Romans six twenty three says, "For the wages of sin is death." But but thank God that there's a second part in that verse that says, "The gift of God is eternal eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord." Um, even even uh, this past week, Eddie Chavez talked about choices. Um, he talked about choices that we had to make. He talked about choices that Jesus made um, to die for us, and even better yet, to be resurrected and live for us. Um, and some of you guys have made choices this semester. Some of you guys have been kind of on the fence about some stuff. Um, but I'm kind of here tonight to make sure you guys don't miss out on the big picture of what we've been talking about all semester. Um, I, I just want to make sure that you guys haven't missed out on the life that all of our Young Life leaders have been talking about um, this whole semester. Uh, I'm going to start off by asking, I guess, a kind of tough question that during this night. but. Are we truly worshiping God? Are you guys truly worshiping God tonight? Are you guys truly worshiping God in your lives? Are we truly worshiping the God who's all-powerful and almighty? Are we truly trusting in him? Are we, are we truly coming together to worship the God who's loving? Are we, are we loving others? Um, are, we, are we truly worshiping the God who, who lives in us? Are we truly living a life? Um, some are, all of you guys just saw that chisel video on um, God's chisel, and uh, in the video was kind of just kind of unique. That guy kind of pops out after you know this guy. I think his name is Tommy. Uh, says a prayer of how he wants God to mold him and to shape him, and uh, God God shows up um, just like just like prayer. Prayer works. So God shows up and he starts to want to chisel away, chisel away at Tommy. <coughs> And Tommy kind of he kind of squirms. He's kind of like, ow, you know, it's, it's kind of tough for him. And you know, when, when Tommy kind of gets a sensitive subject, or I guess a tough subject, he's kind of like, whoa, God, I don't have a problem with that. You know, I don't, I don't deal with that problem. Um, and I think that was based on the the root that he didn't trust God. Um, are we trusting God with our lives? Are we trusting God? Um, Enough to enough to do what he commands and what he asks. Um, so that, that that requires another question, and that's uh, to really say that we're truly living requires us to ask what we're really focused on. You know, all of us have heard Matthew twenty-eight, uh, the Great Commission, uh, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit. Are we truly focused on stuff like that, on advancing the kingdom? Um, are we truly focused on? on uh, being a part of his vision for what this world looks like and being a part of his will. Um, there's another verse I just want to read to you guys. It's in 2 Corinthians. and uh, To me, it has to do with making God's name great um, above all names, above our, our will, above what we want to do. Um, so 2 Corinthians um, verse 7, starting at um, or 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse 17. And it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. 
That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Trespasses are like sins. And, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore, implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I just want to ask you guys, are, are we ambassadors for Christ? Because if we're not, that, that's what we should be striving to do. Because that's the Christian life. That's part of the life. And it, it's life. Everything else everything else is death. Everything else is leads to, leads to death. Um, are we are we focused on becoming more like Christ? And are we focused on living life better? Um, being, being in a relationship with Christ is, is what we should be focused on. Um, even tonight as we worship God through song and through listening and, and uh, confession, it, it's, what, it's what really what Young Life is. Um, we're saying this is kind of a, a different night from Young Life, but at its core, Young Life is about fellowship with God and fellowship with other believers. So, Really, it's what young life actually is. Um, it's, it's just a little a kind of different setting of it. Um, and I, I just want to challenge you guys, number one, to kind of look at the things in your life that you think are real, that you think are lives, that you think make up who you are, and challenge you guys to compare that to Christ. Um, I promise you the things in your life that you're trying to draw from uh, aren't, aren't getting you anywhere. Uh, like the guy said up there, um, it's like it's like an empty well. Um, everything else is kind of like an empty well. And you try to draw and kind of, I guess, quench your thirst by getting the water from this well, but there's nothing in it. There, there's nothing in it. It's empty. It's a dead end. Everything, everything but Christ is a dead end. It's not living. Um, so, even even in the in the video, our lives are kind of set up um, for God to make His masterpiece into. Um, in this original creation, we were His masterpiece, but we we cloud our lives and um, we make up stuff in our lives that that don't honor God. We make up stuff in our lives that that mess up the masterpiece. Um, Ephesians two ten two ten says we are God's workmanship. Created Christ Jesus for good works, for which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, so when God kind of chisels, chisels away at us, um, like you'll get a chance to hear from some people a little later on, when He kind of chisels away, away at us, it can be painful. Um, we heard a man talk about earlier how it was kind of a struggle for him as soon as he went back. Um, it's not an easy road, um, but it's really it's really a process of discipline. It's really, are we, are we really wanting to live this life? Are we really disciplined to, to, to live the life of, of, of what Jesus wants and what God wants? Um, the chisel is tough, but it, it's necessary to get the masterpiece that's underneath it. Uh, the masterpiece that God originally created. And, uh, and for you guys that are down in that kind of it might not be worth it. It's, it's totally worth it. Um, there's a verse in Romans, Romans 8, and it says, you know, he makes all things work together for our good. So it's, it's not it's not like it's a one-sided relationship where God gets glory and we get nothing. It's for our good that we're chiseled. It's for our good that we're shaped into this masterpiece um, that God intended us to be. Um, it's for our benefit. It's definitely worth it. You can ask me. You can ask the young life leaders. You can ask some people in the crowd. You can ask man. It, it's worth it. Ask him how his life is now. But when it when it comes to chiseling, um, like God said in the video, some of us some of us don't want to put the work in. Even, even though it's worth it, even though it's totally it'll totally change your life, some of us don't want to put the work in. He said some of his children just kind of talk. Just kind of talk kind of talk about it. You know, I'm, I'm sure you guys know some people that you know that just talk about stuff and never do it. You never, you never get to be chiseled. 
You never get, get to be this masterpiece that he wants you to be. Um, and I don't, I don't really know kind of what you guys think the chiseling is, but I think, I think that you guys need to get that the chiseling isn't what God created. God's not chiseling his masterpiece. God's chiseling the things that we've created in our lives, the things that we've plastered over our hearts, and the things that we've we've covered up um, in an effort to not show people who we really are. He's chiseling the fabrications of, of ourselves that we pass off to other people because we think it's cool or because we think uh, people will think highly of us. Um, he, he, he chisels he chisels at that stuff surrounding his original creation. And, uh, God, I, I just strongly urge you to, to let him chisel at your lives, God. Guys, to let him chisel at the things that surround your heart, the barricades and the strongholds of sin that surround your heart, that, that plot what God really wants to do in your life. It's a total process of surrender. It's really, it's really trusting and living for what God wants you to do, and that's the only way you'll be able to surrender what needs to be chiseled. Um, and just kind of quoting what he he said in the video: when you when you look in the mirror, what do you see? Because God, in God's original creation, He sees Jesus if we have life. He sees Jesus if we have salvation. Um, but what we're looking at. If we look at ourselves still, if other people still see us and not Jesus, he's got to keep chiseling. He's got to keep chiseling until at the core he sees Jesus. He sees what we're really about. He has to keep chiseling in our lives. He has to keep working and molding our lives for our good to, to see what he originally created, um, which is life, which is a better life in this Christian walk. Um, in a moment, you guys are going to get to, to hear it from the people who stand beside you. In a moment, you guys are going to get to hear how God is molding and worked and chiseling in some of you guys' lives and how, how it's been maybe a struggle for them, maybe maybe not, but how it's, how it's changed their lives for the better. Um, but I just kind of want to leave you guys with, with saying that we're not junk. God doesn't make junk. God God chisels junk. We're not worthless. We're priceless in his eyes. God, God sent his only son on behalf of us. He that knew no sin, he became sin. He sent his only son because we're worth it to him. We're his masterpieces. So I'm going to invite the band back up here to please another song.